I'm not sure who needs to hear this message, but God wants you to take a break. I need you to do me a quick favor and share this video with everybody you know, because it's some people that's about to be set free by the word of God. How do you know that, Demarcus? Man, listen to me. All it takes is one word from God. And listen, it's people that you know, they may appear to have a smile on their face in public. But boy, when they get by themselves, they be crying buckets of tears. They have so much stress and worry from this world. See, anybody can walk out the front door and put on a smile. <laughs> Pretend to have it all together, but you just don't know, boy. Sometimes the enemy be beating them down. And see, they don't want nobody to know because they used to being a strong person. They the person that, that helped you out. They the person that helped them out. But you just don't know. Sometimes those be the people, listen to me, that be so burned down. And all it takes is you sharing the word of God. You understand what I'm telling you? Sharing the word of God with them. Why, how, you, how, you, how do you know that to be true? To, listen to me. God's word can make an incision with precision. Somebody getting that walk in this morning. So, salute to the gang, man. Salute to you, man. Anybody trying to better themselves walking down the neighborhood, salute to you. You ain't got to be out there, but you're out there anyway. But let me get back to the top. God's word can make an incision with precision that'll lead you to make the decision to choose to step out, boy, and, and really trust him and walk by faith. All it takes is one way. That's all it took for me. That's all it took for me. One word. Well, Demarcus, why do you make these videos? Because I know all it takes is one word. And I'm passionate about what I'm talking about. Let me tell you something. God's word literally tells us it's Jesus talking. Jesus says, come to me, all ye who are burdened, heavy laden. That means all you who are wore, wore out from the world. Try just, just, just trying to make, but, 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 but you just have that emptiness, that void. He says, come to me, all ye who are burdened and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. <laughs> what does rest mean to Marcus? That's freedom from your stress, struggle, and strain. He said, take my yoke upon, uh, upon you and, and learn of me. Because I am gentle and lowly at heart. He says the, the, the burden is light. In other words, Jesus is saying to give me all of your worries. Give me all of your cares. Give me that 85 pound backpack that you wear every single day. Give me that. Because I want you to walk in freedom and peace. God wants you to take a break. It is possible to still go about your day. But operate in a stillness and a calmness and a quietness in your soul because you have settled the matter and you know that, listen, Jesus is in control. This is not my battle. God is fighting my battle. The Bible says to be still and know that I'm God. Now, Demarcus, why does the Bible say to be still and know that I'm God? Because listen to me, boy, when you when you choose to be still, when listen to me, if you take your hands off of a situation. See, be still, basically take your hands off of the situation and know that he's God. Now, when God does it, you know exactly who to give the glory to because, you know, listen to me. I took a step back and just let God go in that work. But too often. We want God to work our situation, but we got our big headed tail all in the way. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You ever you ever been? <laughs> hey. You ever been in the kitchen trying to make something? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Let's say you got about 10, 10 family members or something in the house, right? You know what I mean? Or 10 friends, whoever. And let's say you're trying to make something in the stove. And somebody all in your elbow room talking about, hey, how about you put a little bit more butt? You're like, man, if you don't get your big headed, your big headed tail out the way, I do this because. I've been making this meal for about uh, 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 yay years. About 13, 14, 15 years. This is what I specialize in. Like, you know what you're doing in that kitchen. You just need your elbow room. And as a matter of fact, all 10 of y'all, please leave the kitchen. Because I got this covered. Listen to me. God is a specialist. 
He knows how to make the crooked things straight. He's been working miracles way before you were born. He don't need you all in the way talking about your opinion. <laughs> just, just move over and let God be God. He used Moses to part the Red Sea so surely he can part that situation, boy. He can give you peace. Because peace is not the absence of a storm. Peace is the presence of God in the storm with you. Peace is not something, it's someone. And see, when you get out God's way and you let him cook, let him cook. He knows just what ingredients to put in there. Oh, okay, DeMarcus need a little more peace today. Sprinkle with DeMarcus. Oh, okay, yeah, DeMarcus. Okay, DeMarcus need more of this. Because you know DeMar DeMarcus need to work on everything, you feel me? <laughs> DeMarcus, we're going to do this. Today. Hey, cook it up, Lord. I trust you. It's never no, Lord. It's always yes, Lord. And listen to me, when you let God in on that situation, boy, you, you'll be able to take a break. You'll be able to take a break. See, you're natural, he's supernatural. Which one you want to work? And I'll leave you with this right here. <laughs> Watch this. It's about to change your life. Watch this. See, when the Holy Spirit is working, you resting. But when you're working, the Holy Spirit is resting. So who you think I'm, I'm going to let go to work? The Holy Spirit take over. Because see, DeMarcus, he going to rest. DeMarcus going to rest today, dog. And I need, I, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to give you, I'm, I'm trying to give you what God love, man. And that's the truth. Got to get out the way, man. Give God his office space to do his office work. You may feel stressed or burned down. Because see, worrying is just like a rocking chair. That's what worrying do. See how I'm in a rock? Worrying is like a rocking chair. It gives you something to do, but it gets you absolutely nowhere. <laughs> so we don't need to worry today. No. Don't worry about your future because God is already there. <laughs> what if I was to tell you that you're going to be all right? What if I was to tell you, man, stop being silly and worried and stressing about a little bit. Of, man, don't worry about it, dog. God got you, man. Take you a break. Trust God. Enjoy your day. Too often we so focused on the destination that we don't we don't ever pull over on the side of the road to smell the flower. To look at the trees, to look at the birds. You ever, man, you, have you ever... Went to the park and just looked at some birds. Them little dudes be singing. They be playing. They, they might mess around there and kick each other. You know, you see birds, they be chasing each other. I, I watched them one time. One little dude kicked the other dude. I'm like, dang, I didn't know y'all had legs. I just thought y'all had wings. One little bird kicked the left leg out. I'm like, dang, man. You know what I'm saying? Kind of violent out here. But anyway, that's not the point of the video. Birds be playing, man. Listen to me. A bird don't worry about where his next meal come from. He just out there singing to the Lord. If a bird ain't tripping, <laughs> and I got a way bigger brain than, a, I don't even know if a bird got a brain, but I know, you know what I'm saying, I got a way bigger brain than a bird. So you mean to tell me I got a bigger brain than a bird and I could be more burdened down than a little bitty bird? Come on, man, the math ain't mathing. So what that mean, DeMarcus? That mean you need to use your mind in a productive way instead of a way that's detrimental. Right? Stop, wor stop worrying. I'm at a red light so I can look at y'all. Stop worrying. You're going to be all right. DeMarcus, why that pin behind your ear? I'm about to tell you. Give me a second. Give me a second. Because see, let me show you something. God write with an ink pen, man. He don't write with no pencil. Why is that? Because see, a pencil comes with an eraser and God don't have no eraser. He don't make mistakes. He causes all things to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose. And see, when God be writing your story, boy, listen to me. God is confident. He knows the plans that he has for you, declares the Lord. Jeremiah 29, 11. Plans to prosper you, not to harm you. Plans to give you hope in the future. And you're going to be all right, man, because it's in ink. I hate to spoil the ending for you, but you win in the end. How do you know that, DeMarcus? Because it's written in the script. <laughs> Read your Bible. It's written in the script. If you're my friend on Facebook or something, please, 
please, please, please, don't post no status update trying to tell the end into a movie. I don't like that, man. I'm live on the block, you family. You know what I'm saying? Ain't nothing worse than somebody talking about the end of a brand new movie. They're like, uh, oh, this movie's a 10 out of 10. I just ain't like in the end how uh, such and such kicked him in the kneecap. I'm like, oh, man, you about to make your boy cry. <laughs> See, I, you know, I don't like people spoiling the end of a movie, but I love for people to spoil the end of, of, of what life going to be like and tell me what the word of God say. Oh, that give me so much joy, boy. I win in the end. We win in the end, boy. And the enemy know that his time is short. So that's why he's trying to manipulate it and convince us, men, take as many people to hell with him. The enemy's time is shorter than a fingernail, boy. Because Jesus already defeated death a long time ago. He got on that cross, listen to me, for my sin, for your sin, for everybody's sin. It is possible to get saved by faith because you're saved by grace through Christ. You got me? You're saved by faith. But I need you to live by the same faith that you got saved by. Many people, they confident, yeah, I'm saved. Oh, I accepted the Lord in my life. Well, now nah, I need you to live by the every day by the same faith that you got saved by. You know, the same God that saved you is the same God who's faithful to keep you. Why would you trust in God for one thing and not the next? No, we don't do that. No, we're going to trust in him with everything, boy. Ooh, that's your time, your talents, your gifts, your possessions, your money, your family, any and everything. And we surely ain't going to live in fear with it. What that stand for? That's false evidence appearing real. But we view it God's way, F-E-A-R, what that stand for? We face everything and rise. First John 4, 4, what that tell us? Greater is he that's in me than he that is in the world. That means the task that's in front of me is great. Is never greater than the power that's inside me because see, it's Jesus on the inside working on the outside. Anytime you're feeling fearful, it's F, you're forgetting the goodness of God. E, you're envisioning the worst and not the best. A, you accepting defeat before the fight. Or you rejecting God's way of doing it, which is standing on his word and choosing to walk by faith and not by sight and trusting more in God's ability to succeed rather than your own inability to fail. The Bible says God did not give us the spirit of fear, but a power, love, and a sound mind. So we need to be thanking God for a sound mind instead of falling into the enemy traps and, and fear and, and, and biting the bait. He sets up traps. He wants you to overthink. He wants you to fear. He wants you to do this. He doesn't want you to accept the fact that you have a sound mind. But see, the word of God exposes all the lies of the enemy. When you read that scripture and you understand that God has given you a sound mind, a peace, you're able to take that and say, OK, I'm framing my day with the word of God and I'm choosing to live in peace. <laughs> That's a game changer, man. The word of God is a game changer. That's why it's just like taking a bath. You understand? It's recommended daily. <laughs> word of God, just like taking a bath. is rec Oh, I forgot. You don't take a bath every day, huh? Man, that's why you be so musty. I knew I knew I'd be smelling your armpits, dog. Now nah, I'm just messing with you. Boy, the word of God, boy, you got to get into it every single day. They got some construction going on up here. It's all good because God be working, man. I don't mind waiting in traffic. Hey, check it out, though. Oh, man, I know what I, I know about to say. Some some of y'all might say, Demarcus, hey, I heard that already when you talk about fear, them, uh, the analogies. You feel me? But listen to me. Repetition deepens the impressions. You got me? Whatever you practice, you become good at. You understand what I'm telling you? Whatever you practice, you become good at. If you break down the word rehearse, it means to rehear. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You may get annoyed with me saying some of the same things, but listen to you. I love you so much that I don't care about your opinion of me. You may get mad at me for saying some of the same things or whatever, but boy, when you go through the valleys of life, when you're uh, 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 when you go through situations in life, you begin quoting some stuff that you, that uh, some stuff that you heard me say. And you be saying, "Oh man, I needed that. I ain't know it was in me." That's because you've been hearing it so much. Faith come by hearing, hearing by the word of God. The Bible also says that out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. So what that means? If you squeeze a tangerine, what's gonna come out? Tangerine juice. If you squeeze a, a olive, what's gonna come out? Olive juice. If you squeeze an apple, what's gonna come out? Apple juice. What about an orange? You squeeze it, orange juice. When life squeezes you, what's going to come out? 
You don't know, huh? Whatever you've been putting in. So if you've been listening to the word of God and putting that in you, when you go through different situations, you're going to be surprised. You're going to just be speaking the word of God. I can do more. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can. Ooh, you begin to speak it because see, you've been putting in. I purpose in my heart to always bring you the word of God. I love you so much. If you made it to the end of this video, I need you to hit the like button. Then I need you to comment the words. I will walk by faith. I love you so much. I'll see you in the next video.